So here I am in Warsaw, Poland, got the main central train station behind me. This is where many a lad's trip to this part of Eastern Europe starts. If it doesn't start here, it starts at the airport. And in today's video, I'm going to be giving an overview of how much value you can get the bang for your buck here in Warsaw, Poland in terms of the party scene, the nightlife and coming and staying. Maybe you're coming for a long weekend, but increasingly, especially with my clients, they are coming for longer and longer periods, maybe a week, maybe even a month, maybe even move to Poland. It's all super important to understand what is the nightlife like and how much is it going to cost you. So let's get into the video. Let's me. Sar experience. So just behind me here, down below, is my favorite pizzeria here in the center-ish of Warsaw. So first question I normally get asked by clients is where should you stay in Warsaw? Now I recommend staying south of the old town on the same side of the river Wisła. The city center is actually pretty large, it's not that small. It comes down a good bit south of that old town. And the old town of Warsaw is like a lot of old town centers in Europe. It tends to be a bit of a tourist trap and you should definitely go for a walk around, preferably with a local lass from Warsaw itself. Take a little tour around, see the architecture. But in terms of a neighborhood to live in, I find that there's actually a lot going on south of the old town and that is the spot to stay in. So, I like to be in a neighborhood where I have good cafes, restaurants nearby. That's why I'm here, just on this Brusta Street. The price of an Airbnb typically will be at least 50 euros, 55 US dollars in this area. And it can go up, you know, quite considerably from there. But I would say for a nice one, it's probably going to be about, you know, 80 to 100 euros. So 80, yeah, about 90 to 110, 100. 20 US dollars per night. So obviously a lot cheaper than being in London, Paris, or in New York, a big metropolis like that in the West of Europe or in North America, but not super, super cheap either if we compare it to the region here in the center and eastern part of Europe. So not the same price difference as it used to be uh, 10 years ago, for example. And if you want to stay longer, then say a few days, uh, maybe you're planning to come for a few weeks or a month or two, then rent here in Warsaw. I've seen that people say about 600 US dollars. A bit skeptical if you want to stay in this area and have a nice apartment, it's going to cost you 600 dollars. I would say it's going to cost at least a thousand, uh, running up to you know, anywhere. If you want to be in the most exclusive address in Warsaw, it's probably going to be over 3,000 dollars. US dollars per month. And often my clients, they also stay in hotels if they're not gonna stay in an apartment like I am doing here. And typically for a five-star hotel, it's probably gonna be around yeah, 200 euros, 200 US dollars a night to maybe 300. That would be kind of typical here in the center of Warsaw for the very top end. So there you go. Setting up your logistics for your stay here is the first thing to sort out in any city and no different here in Warsaw. So there you get a little bit of an idea how much it will set you back for the value you can get here. So next up are your options for sustenance and entertainment. So, you know, what is the price level, especially in terms of the quality you get in cafes, restaurants, bars, clubs here in Warsaw, Poland. Now, you know, I love coffee, bit of a caffeine addict, and I always have a couple of flat whites every day. And, you know, I looked at the bill, the place I go to for coffee, which is, in my opinion, one of the best here in Warsaw. Flat white was around three euros 60. So not far off four US dollars, which makes it only probably a tiny bit cheaper <laughs> than being somewhere maybe in Western Europe and the US. Uh, so you're not going to see a massive saving in that, on that level. Maybe for standard coffee in a less refined place you know, where you're not gonna find the coffee, the, co the coffee addicts like me, there might be a bit more of a price gap, might be a good bit more cheaper than for that flat white at the top place. Food in general, you can go to nice restaurants here. The options are expanding year on year in Warsaw. And that goes for not just restaurants and type of cuisine that you can get, but also 
the level of the bars and the clubs, the other things to do at night. Żeby zjeść dobrze w Niemczech czułem, że muszę wydać naprawdę dużo pieniędzy. A tutaj dla posi jakby posiłek dla dwóch osób zwykle wy nie wychodził mi mniej niż 50 euro. I to nie, najle nie jakiejś wysokiej klasy restauracji, natomiast czuję, że w Polsce za 50 euro mogę pójść do całkiem fajnej restauracji, zamówić obiad dla dwóch osób, zjeść, zamówić jeszcze do tego drinka, wyjść na jedzonym za te same pieniądze. Dlatego uważam, że jakość do ceny jest bardzo fajną rzeczą w Polsce. Polish traditional food, by the way, Central European has a few things that are in common with countries further east like Belarus and Ukraine. You can see pierogi, for example, look a little bit like Vereniki that I've obviously featured quite a bit in my videos from Ukraine. And basically, I don't eat so much traditional Polish food while I'm here. We'll go and have a soup, maybe some pierogi. But the fusion Polish with other European cuisines, the top end, is exquisite, I would say, really, really great, especially when you're looking at the price versus the quality. It is phenomenal, I would say. Basically, a meal here, probably gonna set you back between 40 and 50 bucks, so we'll say that's 40, 50 US per person, including alcohol. Of course, you can spend as much as you want alcohol and go for the most expensive wine, but within reason, uh, so that's probably about 35 to 45 euros per person, which, comparing it to obviously Western Europe and North America is very good value, probably for the same quality, you know, looking at say the UK or Ireland, which I know better recently than say the US, it's probably at least 30% less expensive here, maybe up to 50%, depending of course where you're hanging out. So that is definitely very attractive in terms of the price versus the quality. Then we got your cocktail bars and your clubs. So cocktail here in Warsaw at a good cocktail bar is gonna set you back around eight or nine euros. So we'll say about 10 US dollars. And that's actually cheaper than up the road in Riga, where I've been filming pretty recently, because there we paid you know, somewhere between 10 and 15 US dollars for cocktails, which is more or less the same price you're gonna find in most of the West, in, you know, in Western Europe or North America. But that is definitely a little bit cheaper than you're gonna find, obviously, this $10 price point, probably uh, it depends where you're drinking normally, but we'll say about 30% cheaper, maybe even 50% as well anywhere you hang out. And then for the clubs, you know, if you go to the Premier Club here in Warsaw, and let's say the minimum spend on the table is somewhere between 300 to 500 euros. So $350, we'll say to about 600. Depends a lot on who you are and who you know, because obviously if you're known here, then probably there won't be any minimum spend. But factor that in, if you're going to a group of lads, that's probably the ballpark figure to go into the more popular clubs. Uh, the ones that have bottle service and are known for the tracking certain type of pretty girl, I would say. I wouldn't say these clubs are probably the best place to meet the sincere, beautiful women of Warsaw. So those type of clubs, there are cer definitely certain ones that really just attract foreign tourists and it looks fine, but the type of girls who go there are definitely the more gold digger types. A lot of, there's actually a bit of, uh, well, I know what to call it a scam, but there's kind of thing called, a phenomenon called champagne girls here, and they're girls who basically go around, and their whole job is to make you drink expensive champagne. Some of the clubs that attract tourists, so be careful. And the others, they tend to attract a certain type of gold digger in general, more than, we'll say, a more sincere, beautiful girl who's looking for a more wholesome relationship, not one that's so transactional. There are, really a lot of great options, but you need to know where to go and you need to have cool crew to hang out with. And I'm also known by my clients as the insider for this part of Europe that I've dubbed New Europe. I have a separate video about that. I'll link it up in the card down below in the description. You haven't seen it to understand what I mean, but basically this part of Central and Eastern Europe and that is going to transform your experience when you go out here. So behind me you can see the skyline for the commercial center of Warsaw and so much has changed in the last 10 years in this city. I remember coming here and 
just have a feeling of a little bit May in terms of the nightlife and the whole scene. And nowadays it feels very, very different. This country, this capital, the economy has been thriving for well over the last 10 years, but really it's come on leaps and bounds. And now it really feels like a pulsating, modern, vibrant European capital. As I said, for me, it is the capital of this new Europe and it has a lot going for it. So here you can see some locals, probably some Ukrainians and Belarusians and other foreigners, maybe even some tourists hanging out, socializing at the bar behind me. And there's probably a little bit of dating going on there, I'd say. And that is the number one question that I get asked by foreign guys about this city and Warsaw. Well, what is the dating scene like? So at the moment in Warsaw, probably about somewhere between 20 and 30 percent of the city is Ukrainian and Belarusian. That's obviously because of the political developments further east of here. So obviously you have the Russo-Ukrainian War, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, and millions of Ukrainians, primarily women and children and old people, they came through here. And many of them have stayed in Poland anyways, and Warsaw had a reasonably big Ukrainian diaspora for the last few years. On top of that, because of the political situation at home in Belarus. Just a lot of young single Belarusians have also up sticks and have come here to Warsaw, made this their new home. So you can see where I'm going with this. Poland nowadays and Warsaw, the capital doesn't just have the pretty Poles, it also has a lot of cute Ukrainians and beautiful Belarusians. So us guys, because we're at least primarily visually based, we first see women. It's not the only thing, obviously, that we factor in, but it is the first thing that grabs our attention. Then here in Warsaw, the beauty level on average is well above the European average, I would say. So I think at first glance, a lot of guys are going to be super excited and enthusiastic about coming here when they see the local uh, Glasses on the street, in the bars, in the clubs, everywhere as you go around, lots of eye candy. But in general, talking to especially Western guys, uh, because my channel, a lot of guys recognize me here in the center of, of Warsaw. Unfortunately, a lot of them are doing the Dege Malarkey, that's why they come over to me. I'll come to that in a second. Overall, their experience is very disappointing because maybe they have the impression that the girls of Warsaw will be super enthusiastic to meet a guy from the States, from Canada, from the UK, from Germany. But nowadays, they are to a penny. There are lots of them running around here in Warsaw. It's not that unique a, a vintage, an offer, right, in terms of value for women in Poland. And obviously, they get to travel a lot. Ukrainians uh, also have the ability to travel and live pretty much anywhere in the EU at, at the moment and uh, largely across the globe. It's actually one of the stronger passports are likely to have. And of course, Poland itself is in the European Union for almost 20 years. So yeah, any girl that wants to leave Poland probably already has a long time ago, whenever they finish university at the oldest. And they tend to be the girls who would be probably the most interested naturally in foreigners. So if you're relying on the foreigner cup factor, then you're probably going to be mightily, mightily disappointed in Warsaw. Not really going to cut it nowadays. And I've noticed here that it's extremely rare to see a pretty Polish girl with a foreigner. Extremely rare. You might see a little bit more with the Ukrainians, but it's still actually extremely rare to see any foreign guys with uh, girls here, unless, unless they are unattractive. So you will see foreigners, the foreigners you see with girls here, vast majority with girls who are maybe a little bit on the plump side. Yep. Not sure why you'd come from Western Europe or North America to be with a girl who's overweight. You can find that back home for sure. And, you know, on this scale of one to 10, I would say you rarely, well, basically you normally see the foreigners with four and below. 
and very rare you see anything like with a seven or higher. That, that's like really, really unusual to see. So what's going on? Well, a lot of the foreign guys that come here, they rely on their foreigner factors, as I said. Most of them, I guess, go into Tinder and start swiping right, but you know, I've made a lot of videos about this topic. I'll just link one up in the card down below in the description. My last one, where I outline the five poor strategies that foreigners are using in general in this entire region, New Europe. And Tinder, there is a limit. Basically, nowadays, the more beautiful girls don't really go spend much time on Tinder because they already have enough offers. And it's kind of girls who are less attractive that, you know, for a variety of reasons I go into in that video, who are going to be there. So relying on Tinder, mm, it depends what you want to do. But if you want to meet the beautiful women of the region, mm, not going to be really good spot. You definitely need to be in the top 5% of male profiles there to be even worth swiping in my opinion. The other thing I see a lot of guys doing, they're normally down by the, the train station, which I guess is probably up this direction just there, the central train station and the mall just outside it, is you have these guys kind of doing a dating version of begging, which is called day game. And what they do is they basically uh, go up to women, stop them on the street and try to get their phone number, I guess, and maybe even a date later. But in general, that is pretty pathetic. I see now they've even started to go near where I've been staying and loiter outside the beauty salons, it seems. <laughs> Man, it's like, it's really like begging. It's like a beggar would do. They'd hang out somewhere where they think the people are going to have maybe the loose change beside the ATM and kind of pester uh, 50, 100 and hope they get a little bit of loose change. That's, that's basically a good analogy for what it is. And uh, many of the guys who come up to me, who recognize me here, they do this day game stuff. And uh, I asked them, like, how many of the girls do you actually have any sort of intimate relationship with? And they tell me, almost none. So stop doing that. That's my, <laughs> that's my piece of advice, right? It's not a very productive <laughs> investment of your time. And you're being a bit of a minor public nuisance, right? Because there's just so many guys doing this that even many girls here have asked me why they they have these strange foreign guys coming up to them, especially around the train station and that shopping mall, uh, saying the same kind of canned opening lines and it's all a bit weird and awkward. And I said, yeah, there's a thing called day game. Yeah, enough said about that. So what are the alternatives? Well, you need to go back to basics, back to old school, right? You need to be out socializing in a cool crew and actually have a reasonable amount of value in the eyes of the women here in order to well the dating market. So that is actually what I do with my clients who come here. We focus on social circle plus nightlife, also help them upgrade their social media. So basically Instagram, working getting a very strong Instagram profile. And actually you could put all that stuff on Tinder as well if you really wanted to you know, start swiping right. I'm not gonna tell you that. No one has ever met anyone on Tinder, obviously they have, but basically the real magic happens on Instagram and I help my clients get very high level photos that actually just demonstrate their value and allow women to perceive them obviously to the true value because most guys, they just have crappy social media. They have terrible pics and they don't understand how to uh, demonstrate the value because my clients in general, because not everybody can apply, well, everybody can apply, but they don't take everybody's by application only. They tend to be guys overwhelmingly of high value. And the issue is just demonstrating that. There's no need to fake it. They just need to be able to display it. And we are going to go out and socialize in my crew. It won't be Billy No Mates. That was another thing that always comes up with a lot of guys who are my consulting clients is even after they move to the region, they tell me that I just don't have any cool friends to hang out with. But that's taken care of on the Zara experience and the in-person experience because we'll be hanging out with my crew. And that is the contrast, right? A lot of these guys who are coming to party, they go to a general mission, low level club, probably a tourist trap with a bunch, either as a lone wolf, <laughs> trying to do the sniper run, or with a group of other uh, tourists. And it's just not perceived as high value, not going to the right places, don't have any social proof around you and contrast that with rocking up to the club. You're already at your table, you're in a cool crew of guys and girls who have some status here in the city, know people, and it's fun, you're having a great time, 
and you will be perceived several, several levels higher than the average tourist and you'll be in a better environment and you'll be having a phenomenal time. And that is what the Zara experience is basically about. It is your first step to having a new 5X lifestyle here in New Europe, in the eastern part of the European Union and some of the countries around it. And it is, as I mentioned, by application only. Down below is an application form. Now, before you do that, if you haven't already, go check out two playlists. Well, actually, go to check out three. Let's make it three today. You're going to have my Vodka Vodka series. There, there's over 50 hours of content, long format, and you will get to deep dive deep with me into the mindset here in this region, not just the, the dating, the partying, also all facets of life. It's really an amazing library, an encyclopedia of insider knowledge here because I'm known by my clients as the insider for Eastern Europe. And now New Europe is part of Central Europe. Second playlist is the cities like here in Warsaw. We'll be making a vlog that come on the channel very soon from Warsaw. But you're gonna have other cities there where I live this our experience with my clients, not just here about Warsaw. Got a few client testimonials there. And then the third playlist is like a series of tutorials about how to date the nines and tens, the uber beautiful, the super hotties of this region. And as I just alluded to, it's not just about Warsaw here in Poland. Also been bringing my clients over the last year or so, just over a year. As a result of the Russo-Ukrainian war, I can't unfortunately uh, bring clients to Ukraine. Fingers crossed that will change sometime in the near future. Also not bringing clients to Belarus or Russia for very obvious reasons. But I have been bringing my clients to Almaty, the almighty, the amazing, just off the steps of Central Asia. Really amazing place, so beautiful. You got rivers, lakes, canyons, mountains, and super friendly Kazakhstanis. And definitely it is a place that is overlooked. It's also a bit far away. It is in the extreme east, east, east of Europe, Central Asia. And also the nightlife is pretty decent. It's about 85% Asian in appearance and about 15% European. So definitely one of my favorite cities to go and live it up large. Also been bringing clients to Riga, a couple of Latvia just up the road from here. And there you're in the Baltics. You got kind of a bit more of that old world architecture. You got the old town that we normally stay well away from because it is a tourist trap, but it has a super cool scene in other parts of the city. And if leggy blondes are your thing, then definitely Riga is a city to consider because it has some of the tallest people, I guess in the world, but definitely in Europe. And it has some of the highest instance of blonde hair. And I have also been going to Mad Moldova, crazy Chisinau. It's actually where I spent a lot of time in the summer of 2022 into the autumn and winter of 2022. And have been there a couple of times already in 2023 and basically it is probably a bit similar to Ukraine if you've been there uh, in the past to Ukraine because it's right beside it and you have you know a little bit of a mixture because Moldovans obviously Romanian is the official language and you have people who are maybe a bit more Romanian in appearance and also who look more maybe Slavic like Ukrainian Russian in appearance as well so I kind of say it's like the Latina center for this region because people are a little bit more brown hair and maybe slightly darker complexion you're going to find in other parts of the region. Knife life is good and I've been having a lot of fun in Chisinau over the last while. So this video was more about the partying aspect but also these countries are great to spend 3 to 12 months a year in. It's kind of how you're going to max it out not just with the partying, the dating but also in terms of your lifestyle. So obviously it's gotten dark here. It's about time to end the video, but down below is the application form and the words of 
a very famous Canuck ice hockey player, Wayne Gretzky. He was a man of Polish, Belarusian and Ukrainian origin. So definitely a man to quote. At the end of my videos, he said, miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So down below is the application form. And obviously it is the Zvidenia from Warsaw, Poland. Before I lose the light here, ciao, ciao. Sar experience.